Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Gaysford, and in this video, we're going to be talking about adding devices to your home assistant. And we're not actually going to be adding any devices to our home assistant in this video specifically, but now that we have our home assistant set up to a point where we can actually use it and start adding stuff to it, now we need to kind of talk about what devices we can add to our home assistant and how we're going to add them. So I figured this would be a good time to make a quick video like this, just so that way if you're brand new into the home smart home automation game, you'll kind of have an idea of what you need to do to actually start getting some of these devices and kind of what you need to start planning out. So the biggest question is, how do you add devices to Home Assistant? And there are many, many different ways to do this. Um, usually the most common for specifically smart home automation type things would, are going to be your Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. Um, and there's a few different ways you could get those connected to your Home Assistant. You could either choose to do so through something like this. This is a Z-Wave USB stick and that's going to allow you to connect Z-Wave devices to your home assistant setup. There's also something called Zigbee. Zigbee is going to allow you to set up Zigbee devices to your home assistant and then there's smart things which is going to be um, a combination of Zigbee and Z-Wave devices. Um, there's also Wi-Fi enabled devices like the SmartThings plug, which so just connects to your Wi-Fi. You download the SmartThings app and then you set up a SmartThings integration through Home Assistant. So there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different integrations with Home Assistant. And that's one of the great things about Home Assistant is that the community is huge. The support for devices are huge um, is you could even go as far as building your own devices and building out your own connections and all that sort of stuff. There's also a thing called MQTT which I'm not a master on but it is a connection protocol that home assistant devices use as well. So let's just jump right in and talk about the differences between these different type of protocols and different ways to connect things to your home assistant. So let's we'll start off with Wi-Fi because I feel like that's going to be the most common um, way that people are going to be connecting their devices to their home assistant. You're going to use like smart lights, smart plugs, smart Wi-Fi switches, um, just normal Wi-Fi devices, maybe a Wi-Fi coffee maker. It doesn't really matter what it is if it's a Wi-Fi device. Um, there's a there's a chance you'll be able to integrate it into your home assistant and I say there's a chance because it's not the most straightforward way to add things to your home assistant it's not sometimes the home assistant will just see them on your network and you'll just be able to find them and add them right in and that's great and all but some devices just don't have that options to give you guys an example of this let's take go ahead and take a look at a light bulb um, so if this was a Wi-Fi light bulb, I would plug it in, set it up, probably using the Wi-Fi app that was provided for this light bulb. Um, really common one is Toya Smart. There's also the LightX, and then there's also the Hue brand, but those tie into particular ecosystems or apps and stuff like that. They don't connect directly to your home assistant. And then what you would use is uh, some sort of integration like the Toya Smart integration, the Philips Hue integrations, you use those to tie into your home assistant. So the biggest problem with something like that is now you're relying on those services to be up when you want to control your light bulb because you might be able to log into home assistant, turn, try to turn it on and off, but if Toya Smart or LightX or Philips Hue's is down at that particular moment, even though you're pressing the button in your home assistant, there's a chance that your light bulb is either going to stay off or on because um, you're relying on some of these other services. And so that's probably the biggest downside for using most Wi-Fi enabled devices. Um, and that brings us over to Z-Wave and Zigbee. Um, and there's a few different ways to do this. Like I mentioned before, you could use something like a SmartThings Hub, which is going to have Z-Wave and Zigbee integrated into it, or you can use um, USB 
devices to go ahead and connect those directly to your home assistant. So with the smart things, um, let's say you had a door sensor that connected to your smart things hub. Um, again, you're going to be reliant on the smart things service or ecosystem to get that information back to your hub. And that's kind of why going forward with my home home assistant setup, I'm not going to be using the smart things hub to really manage any of my devices. Um, I am going to still be using smart things Wi-Fi devices such as this outlet, but this wi this connects directly to the Wi-Fi. It's not reliant on me having a hub. Um, so that is something to keep in mind if you're going to go the smart things route. Um, if you're using the smart things hub, you are reliant on the smart things ecosystem and then their integration using a token to actually plug into your home assistant. When you're using something like a Z-Wave USB stick and a Zigbee USB stick, those are going to plug directly into your home assistant. There's no cloud backend or anything like that. It's just your home assistant. So the connection will go from your home assistant to the USB stick to your smart device. And so that's kind of why doing it something like what I'm going to do going forward in these videos using the USB sticks is generally preferred for most home automation enthusiasts. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done using something like smart things if that's just easier for you. Um, I set up my entire home using smart things at my previous house and 95, 97% of the time I had no issues going that route. Um, I do want to mention that over time, um, I did start to see some weirdness with the smart things where my sensors weren't being automatically updated unless I restarted Home Assistant. So basically a room, let's say, was 50 degrees. Um, that's pretty cool. Let's say a room was 70 degrees um, and I, I wouldn't know what the current temperature of that room was until I restarted my Home Assistant and then I would see that room is now 72 degrees um, and then until I restarted my home assistant I wouldn't know if it was still 72 or not and if it was a door sensor I wouldn't be able to tell if that door was open or closed because for some reason the smart things service wasn't relaying that information to my home assistant. Now I'm not going saying you're going to have those type of problems but that is something just to keep in mind. Um, it's a possibility and that's kind of the problems you will face when you're relying on some of these integrations. Now if you want to control all your devices there's a good chance you're not going to be able to get away from all the integrations out there. Um, something like Simply Safe you're only going to be able to do through the Simply Safe integration um, or if you have a Tesla you're going to have to use the Tesla integration. I have Simply Safe not a Tesla but um, there's definitely going to be services out there you need to rely on. But a lot of people, they want to get as close to bare bones um, as they can. They don't want to be super reliant on these services because if smart things service is down, which happens more than you would like it to, um, you have no control. And if the smart things hub is controlling your locks, you can't lock your doors, you can't unlock your doors through the home assistant at least. So we already talked about how using integrations could be a downside because now you're being reliant on those services. Um, and so that's what a good pro for using something like Zigbee and Z-Wave um, using the USB sticks. But even if you are using the smart things hub, um, there are some pros to using the US Zigbee and Z-Wave protocol for your home automations. So for starter, they both work as kind of like mesh networks. So a lot of people know of mesh networks because they have the Wi-Fi bundles. So if you have a few different Wi-Fi points around your house, a really popular one would be like Google Wi-Fi. Let's say you have three Wi-Fi hubs around your house, but when you walk through your house, you have internet no matter where you are. So that's a mesh network and Zigbee and Z-Wave, they kind of operate the same way. Um, but it's important to note that not all Zigbee and Z-Wave devices can actually relay that Zigbee or Z-Wave signal. Um, a lot of these devices that run off battery power, um, they can't relay that signal. But let's say you had a Zigbee smart plug, which they make or a Zigbee light socket or Zigbee light that they make. Um, those could 
possibly be repeaters for your Z-Wave and Zigbee network. Um, it's important to note not all devices have that functionality, so you'll have to look up so you'll have to look into it and maybe depending on how big your home is strategically place devices in certain spots but let's say i had my home assistant um, on the far left side of my house and i had devices that i wanted to control on the far right side of my house um, there's a chance that those z-wave devices or um, Zigbee devices aren't going to reach from the right side of the house to the left side of the house um, just because of the distance or the type of walls in between there and there and the signal is just not going to be strong enough. So what I could do is I could buy a Z-Wave outlet or a Zigbee light, um, something that I know for sure has a repeater in it. You could Usually you'll find that information under the tech specs if you're looking and buying these kind of devices. Um, whether they can be used as a repeater or not. But if I were to put a Zigbee light in between my home assistant and the Zigbee device I was trying to connect on the far right side of the house, now I have kind of like a Zigbee network where that Zigbee device on the right side of my house is gonna be able to connect to my home assistant going through the light bulb that I have in the middle of my house. And I know that's a real basic example. Um, it doesn't definitely cover all the details or the nitty gritty of what is actually happening. But if you are just getting started with your home assistant journey or your home automation journey, um, these are things that you're gonna have to discover or learn at some point in time. So that's why I wanted to make this quick video and just give you a heads up and kind of a quick rundown of what these connection protocols are. So that way you can make the best decision on which devices you're going to want to use in your home. Um, as always guys, if you like the video, go ahead and press that like button. I'd really appreciate it. If you guys are new here, go ahead and press subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I think we're up to 33 subscribers, which is incredible. Thank you guys so much for hitting that subscribe button and wanting to be part of the channel. I'm going to go ahead and release another video on Friday. It's going to be our first video where we actually hopefully get a device connected to our home assistant. Um, they're going to be some Z-Wave locks. I actually have one right here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but it's going to go ahead and connect to our Z-Wave USB stick. So if you're interested in smart locks, most of them are gonna be using the Z-Wave protocol. Definitely stick around for that video. Um, then going from there, I'll be doing the Zigbee setups and I'll start doing some other one-off integration videos and stuff like that. But we're at a point where our home assistant setup where we could actually start adding devices to it, which is really exciting. So if that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button. Um, I am new to YouTube here, so if you have any comments, feedback, questions, definitely throw them down in the comment section down below, and I'll definitely try to do my best to answer them in a way that makes sense. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching the video and giving me your time. Um, again, expect that Z-Wave video to come out on Friday.